And good evening. Thank you so much for joining me in this Bible study on this Sunday evening as we are endeavoring in this study, a series of lessons that we have been looking at called Life Lessons from Joseph. Life Lessons from Joseph. Uh, this is actually, if you're keeping up, it would be part uh, six, part six of our series of lessons that we've been doing on that of Joseph from the Old Testament. I would encourage you to get your Bibles and go to the book of Genesis as we will be looking at uh, this lesson as really the finale for our, our series uh, of the life lessons here. Joseph's life, uh, I think we can all agree, uh, is so rich in applications for us even today. A life, uh, as we have considered and, and mentioned, has truly been a roller coaster ride of ups and downs, twists and turns. And all through the ups and downs and those twists and turns of Joseph's life, he stayed on track and he didn't let the dream die. And through the pit, to the prison, to the palace, Joseph held to his faith in God. Now, in this final lesson of the series, as we consider the end of Joseph's life, I want you uh, to go to Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. So, and, and we just want to see what uh, life lessons we can learn from Joseph as he is about to die at the age of 110 years old. So Genesis chapter 50, I want us to note here in verses 50 down through, uh, I'm sorry, verse tw uh, chapter 50 verses 22 through 26. Let's read together there. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation, the children of Mekur, the son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Joseph's knees. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So then Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Now, as we look at the uh, this final lesson from Joseph's life, uh, remember that uh, as we really ask the question here, uh, asking ourselves, how do we want to be remembered when our life upon this earth is over? And considering the final chapter of Joseph's life, I think the lessons that he imparts to us in how he uh, dealt with, how he handled uh, death will help us in how we face the final chapter of our lives as well. And that time comes. So really the first thing that I would point out, uh, something that's very interesting uh, that we find is how Joseph spoke regarding his own death. Uh, I think it's very clear, uh, as we saw in that in that uh, in our text there, that Joseph simply said, "I am dying." It certainly appears from how Joseph spoke regarding his own death that he, Joseph, was prepared to die. Now, this is not a topic that. Uh, many are just looking to have on any given uh, day or moment. Uh, due to the tough subject matter that death is, uh, we see in our society people who will use a variety of words to take the, the, the gravity of the word death and, and will use other, 
other words uh, to describe death as someone uh, who has passed, someone who has uh, departed. Uh, death is, is not uh, something that we really find ourselves speaking of uh, really comfortably with folks. <laughs> um, but what, what appears is Joseph uh, seems to be open about it, prepared for it, and was speaking freely to his own brothers about it. Now, interestingly, it seems that, that uh, he speaks as one who is free of, of any guilt. He had lived his life, as we have noted, throughout this series of lessons in really a remarkable way. Uh, and it reminds me of how Paul really spoke of, of his own life uh, as confident in that he didn't waste his time here on earth. He didn't, now, the years that he spent as Saul of Tarsus before he... Uh, heard the message of the gospel and was baptized into Christ and to arise and walk in his of life, as he even was to say to those in Romans 6, verses 3 and 4, uh, as, as one who puts on the body of Christ in, in the new life, that, that uh, as we know, Saul of Tarsus uh, became that great apostle Paul. I mean, the time that he spent in Saul of Tarsus, that, you know, that, that, that kind of life, that kind of destructive behavior and conduct of sinfulness, uh, fighting against uh, Christ and, and the gospel, not living the way God wanted and desired for him to live, well, that was a waste of time. But when Paul became, when Saul became that Christian, and, and, and as again, Paul, he didn't, he didn't remain that way as, as the Saul of Tarsus and, and con conduct himself in the same old sinful habits and those types of things. No, he was a changed person. And we see that through the scriptures. And he didn't waste the time from that point. He didn't waste opportunities. He knew how important and significant his life in Christ was. And he lived in such a way as he even described to Timothy, as we, as, uh, as I think well known to us from that of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 7 and 8, when he said, I have fought the fight, I have kept the faith, I have finished the course. And so, really, when we think about our life, we think about, you know, are we wasting time? Are we wasting opportunities to do good and to be what God has called us to be? Uh, and, and when I think about that, we have to ask, you know, just like Paul, he knew his life was coming uh, close to the end there. And, and he was able to confidently say that, that he had fought the good fight, he had kept the faith, he had, he had finished the course, you know, and, and so he realized that. But I think about it, Joseph, and he realized in the way that he was living his life in such a way. How many of us, though, today are prepared for death? Again, it's not an easy question because it's one that, that does bring uh, discomfort to, to many people in our society and our lives. Just don't want to talk about death that much. But that's life, we know. It's part of life. Death is a certainty. As Hebrews, uh, Hebrew writer in Hebrews 9 and verse 27 says, It is appointed to man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Um, so the fact is, we are going to die. The question that we must ask, though, are we prepared to die? Can we look at our life like Joseph, like Paul, even? And I, I think that, that that's something we need to really, really consider. We need to consider that. But I thought there was something else from this passage that, that uh, you know, we can glean from and, and learn is even in death, uh, we see that Joseph very clearly expressed his faith in God's promises. You notice that? Joseph expressed his faith in God's promises. Now, Joseph is not only mentioned uh, in a large portion of the Old Testament Scriptures, he's actually uh, mentioned as well in the New Testament. Uh, Acts 7, for example, is one, uh, one place Joseph is mentioned, and also you find him in what we commonly call the Hall of Faith, uh, which would be the uh, Hebrews chapter 11. 
And we know that there are several mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 along with uh, their associated uh, faithful acts. Now, in Hebrews 11 verse 22, for example, let me bring that one up there. It says, by faith, Joseph, when he was dying, look, look at this, okay? When he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Now, it's interesting, I believe, to note that Joseph is not spoken of by the Hebrew writer as for his faithfulness, although abused by his own brothers or his faithfulness in overcoming uh, the temptation with Potiphar's wife or even helping many people during the famine. Uh, you, you know, uh, th that's, that's not what you see really here uh, in Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Joseph is spoken of as one who expressed his faith and knew that his people were going to depart from the land of Egypt. Now, of all the things that the Hebrew writer could have recorded about the life of Joseph, which we have spent uh, the last few Sunday, uh, Sunday evenings talking about and discussing uh, here and studying in the Scriptures together, that's what we have uh, just here about by faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Now, there are some that may ask, is what's the big deal about that statement uh, that, Joseph, uh, that Joseph had made to his um, uh, people to the people, and this is amazing because it gives us insight as to where Joseph's focus was over the hundred plus years of his life. Uh, we 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 get some insight here by this statement. By such a statement, really, it attests to Joseph's belief in the promise to Abraham and the covenant that that God uh, made uh, with Abraham, as found. And Genesis chapter 13 and verses 14 and 15. I want you to notice there, Genesis chapter 13, 14 and 15. Again, prove all things according to God's word, not mine. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward for all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. So again, referring back to that very promise that God had given Abraham, that's what Joseph was mentioning there at the end of his life. And Joseph believed in the promise, as noted there in Genesis 13, and repeated even to Isaac, that promise repeated to Isaac, found in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 3, that says, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Joseph believed in the promise repeated then to Jacob. That's found in Genesis chapter 28 and verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, and the land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. When Joseph died, he knew that his descendants would someday get up and leave the land of Egypt and return to the promised land. Now, did Joseph uh, know when this was going to occur, or when this was going to happen? Was he privy to know how it was going to, to come about? No, he, he didn't know those things. He didn't know how, he didn't know when, but he knew it was going to happen. As it says, by faith, Joseph. And he tells his family, as noted in our text of Genesis 50 and verse 24, when he said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and will bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Joseph knew that even in his own death would not keep God from keeping his promise. Today, we have a promise 
that God has given us. Jesus said in John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Now this should remind us of that song that we sing from time to time. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. You know, I thought many times, and I've, I've reiterated this over, over many years as I bring that song to, to, to mind. We sing that song, but do we really believe it? Do we believe it? The faith that Joseph had altered the way that he lived every day of his life. And how he dealt with circumstances, how he responded to those situations. This is what our faith should be doing in our lives today. What we value, our priorities should be different because of our faith in God and our longing for a home in heaven with Him when our journey on this earth is over. You know, we look to the promises of God's holy and divine word and our lives are, are changed because of those promises. Another song that we sing from time to time is Standing on the Promises. And if I have faith in the promises of God, then it will change the way I live my life. Again, this should be such a life-altering transformation that in all that defines who we are, that it will be what we are remembered for when we die a testing of what our focus was over the years of our life. We can see that because we have the luxury of being able to look at the life of Joseph and looking at the way that he dealt with so many situations. And there's no doubt through all of those that we have discussed, those that we have studied in this series of lessons, that Joseph really had God in the center. He had faith in God. And it was the way that he lived his life that he was prepared for death. His focus over the years of his life was God. And I would just submit to you as well that in the statement, the statement that Joseph makes here in this passage, that even in death, Joseph uh, goes on to make a statement about really being identified with the people of God. And, you know, having walked through the many chapters of Joseph's life, even after living in Egypt for 90 plus years, we have seen over and over again that Joseph was different from those who he lived around. Uh, Potiphar recognized Joseph as, as being different. But you know, also, it wasn't just Potiphar that recognized Joseph was different, but Pharaoh recognized that Joseph was different, as well as others. And although Joseph was living in Egypt, he was not an Egyptian. And furthermore, although he would die, his burial would not be likened to that of the traditional Egyptian burials. We realize that Joseph really had spent the majority of his life in Egypt. I mean, he had done great things for Egypt, but that's not who he was. And as noted in his death, he would, he would be identified with the people of God. He made that very clear. To his brethren. But I would also give you another thing here in this brief passage that I want us to consider uh, at the end of this series of lessons. Something else that I think we need to consider is, is that the fact that even in death, Joseph reminds his family that they were not home yet. 
really it's not only his family, but really the generations that were to follow. It's a really strong reminder as the scripture says in verse 25 of, of that text, of our text, Genesis 50, that uh, Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely take care of you, but you shall, and you shall carry my bones up from here. Joseph wanted to impress uh, upon his family a very good reminder that the land of, of Egypt it was really a temporary stay. Uh, again, they were just passing through. I mean, the, he reminded his family and the descendants many, many years to come uh, of his faith and they, that they would, they would make it back home. And just like many of Joseph's chapters of his life, the, the waiting rooms as we have called them uh, in, in this series, Joseph did not know exactly when the Israelites would, would return home, uh, but he was certain that it was going to happen. Joseph's remains would be kept in a coffin in Egypt until many years would pass and his bones would be passed along to the next generation. I want you to think about this. The Israelites were in Egypt for approximately 400 years. Now, during those years would come problem after problem and, of course, uh, enslavement. And although they would go through hundreds of years really uh, entrenched in difficult circumstances, Joseph's bones show to be of importance and significance as we find it recorded as to what happened to his bones. I think it's quite interesting to see that as one reads along in the scriptures and really all that takes place and transpires during those hundreds of years that pass, that in Exodus chapter 13, I want you to notice Exodus chapter 13. We actually find Moses in Exodus chapter 13, the, the record of the uh, ten plagues um, and the time for the Israelites to leave the land of Egypt. There's a lot going on there. We remember, I think that's a familiar account to us all. But I want you to notice sometimes we, we read and, and, and pass over uh, what's actually, you know, some, some maybe might seem to be insignificant uh, details, but look at verse 19 of Exodus chapter 13. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Isn't that something? We know that as they were preparing to leave, according to Exodus 13 and verse 19, Moses, they didn't forget the bones of Joseph. And we know that following the deliverance from Egyptian captivity that that uh, people will, of course, will murmur. They're going to complain. Y'all, we remember that. We we've actually mentioned about a, a few of those things in our our recent uh, lessons, as we've been studying uh, many of the Old Testament scriptures together. And we remember that after they left uh, captivity in Egypt, uh, they were delivered by the Lord through and and, and uh, uh, through Moses, uh, help, helping uh, lead the people. Uh, that during that time of murmuring and complaining that they would, um, well, they would receive the consequences of, of such. And we remember that they would wander in the wilderness uh, for 40 years. Then you go to the book of Joshua. And we find that Joshua would lead the people and something significant is mentioned in chapter 24 of Joshua. What is it? Let's look at verse 32. The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt, they buried at Shechem in the plot of ground which Jacob had bought from the sons of Amor, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of silver 
and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph. Joseph's bones will be carried over the Jordan River. The land is conquered. Even in his death, Joseph managed to keep the dream alive. It's amazing how many times we've probably read throughout the Bible. We've read Genesis and Exodus. We've read into Joshua. And maybe not have connected the significance and the importance of such a statement that Joseph made when he was 110 years old. But look at what happened, just as it was said. Now, in closing our thoughts... I asked earlier for us to consider the question, how do we want to be remembered when our life upon this earth is over? Someone has said, if you want to plan your life, think about what you would like to have said at your funeral and then work backwards from there. (laughs) So how do you want to be remembered? Joseph was remembered for being a man of great faith. And when he came to the end of his life at the age of 110 years, he was prepared to die. He was prepared to die because he had faith in God's promise. That faith wasn't just, yes, I believe that there is a God. I believe in God. It wasn't just a a simple mental acceptance of God's existence, but it was that kind of faith that changed the way he lived. Even when circumstances were not in his favor, when things were not going well for him. It was the kind of faith that caused Joseph to turn down Potiphar's wife as she pursued him. The kind of faith that allowed him to extend forgiveness and grace toward his brothers who had sold him into slavery. And it was the kind of faith that said, I don't know how, I don't know when, but there's coming a day when God's people will leave this place and I want you to take me with you. Joseph might have lived in Egypt, but his heart was in the promised land. Today we also live in the promised land by faith. I say that because it was the Apostle Paul that told the Philippian brethren about a citizenship. Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 and 21. He said, Our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, The Lord Jesus Christ will transform our lowly body that that it may be conformed to His glorious body according to the working by which He is able even to do all things to Himself. You know, we get to that promised land as we mentioned in John chapter 14. That mansion that's been prepared for us. Jesus talked about We get to that that promised land by accepting God's wonderful and marvelous grace. We turn away from sin and we're buried with Christ in baptism. We put off the old man and arise to walk in newness of life as Romans 6 verses 3 and 4 says. Or even as 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 talks about that the antitype which now saves us is baptism. It's not the putting away of the filth of flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. And as Christians, if we have lost our way and we can't see the promised land, it's become clouded and, and the world is living in us rather than the hope that is in Christ, then we need to get back on track and set our affections on that which is above, not on the earth. That's Colossians 3, verses 1 through 3 says as well. So I hope that we are striving each and every day to be the people that God has called us to be. 
And again, when I mentioned that of Paul, and uh, you know, before he became such that great that great apostle, I mean, before he was the Saul of Tarsus, and we remember the the things that he was engaged in and the sinfulness. But when he put on Christ in baptism, he was onward, forward, and upward to that call that God had given him, the calling of that gospel message to live, to have Christ living within him, as Galatians 2 and verse 20 even says. And I hope that that's what we as Christians are striving to do, is to live as we have been called by the gospel walking worthy of the gospel with which we have been called, Ephesians chapter 4 even tells us in verse 1 through 3. As we think about this life of Joseph, oh, there's so many lessons we learn from him. He truly is one of the great spiritual giants of the Bible. He truly does show us in many different instances of life that the circumstances, that's not what makes us. You know, some people say, well, you know, I mean, look at the look at the the cards I've been dealt, and there's just nothing I can do, and 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 will gripe and complain and murmur and all of those other things. But you know what? Joseph says that's not the way. You don't have to be that way. We choose our attitude toward any set of circumstances. And he kept God in the center. And because of that, look at the great things that he did. Through those problems and those horrific circumstances, by remaining consistent in his faith to God, his service, it proved to help, (laughs) well, his own brethren to many people. May we see ourselves and not be defined by the circumstances that we face. But may we truly allow the Lord to work through us, through those circumstances, for the greater good, like Joseph did. Well, that is the series, the life lessons from Joseph. I am so thankful for the opportunity to uh, present uh, these lessons to you. And I am so thankful that you have uh, been following along and studying the Bible with me. As many of you have, have commented on these, on these lessons, and, and uh, I'm so appreciative of your desire to study the Word of God, as we all desire to grow and go in the way that the Lord would have us to. We're not perfect, but boy, we're striving to work and to do as God desires for us to do. And these life lessons from Joseph helps us to do just that. So again, thank you for joining me in this Bible study uh, yet again on this Sunday evening. And as I've mentioned, uh, you know, opportunities are here for you to join us uh, in our our, uh, our, uh, Sunday services. And as I will bring that up there on the screen there before you, that there's modified inside services. Right now we're having uh, two services. We had went down from nine services to having two because we're, we're allowed to do that with the uh, number uh, of gathering um, together. So we, we're able to uh, uh, social distance appropriately and those types of things. Um, and, and so we're taking all those precautions uh, that we need to be taking So we have a 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. So if if you're in the area and you would like to join us for worship, please uh, let us know. Uh, Give us a call. We want to be able to to have you visit and and worship with us. Uh, There's also the drive-in style that is at 10 and also at 11 a.m. You can pull up in the parking lot, tune in to 91.1, the FM station, and you'll be able to uh, hear... Uh, uh, the the everything, the the singing, all of that is going on as well inside the building, and we'll be able to wave to you <laughs> those types of things as as you as you gather with us. Uh, we have many that are that are using that option as well right now too, so it's always good to have them uh, assemble from the drive-in, 
and we have those that's not able to get out at all and, and they're uh, tuning in live from uh, the, the house uh, and those are at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, when we go live on our Facebook page and also on YouTube on our, our YouTube channel. So, so again, we have a lot of options that we're, that we're giving out there. Now our Wednesday evening Bible study, I just want to make mention again that we're open back up at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. So if you're in the area, please feel free to come. Again, social distancing required. We're going to make sure to do that. We're going to take those precautions as we assemble uh, as well. So, so again, we look forward to, to having you and, uh, in uh, worship and, and Bible study if you're able to do to do that. All right, let me get back to where I was at. There we go. I'm getting better at this, I think. All right, I should be after all the after all the time I've been spending trying to put videos together. All right. Well, that's all I have for today. And again, I just want to thank you for for taking the time uh, to study the Word of God. It's, it's well, it's truly valuable time, well spent. All right. Till next time. Thank you so much, and have a great, great day. And God bless.